Option Vega tells us how much to expect the option price to change if the volatility of the option change. So it's an important Greek. It's first partial derivative. So it's a sibling to delta. I'd like to show you here option Vega, including the formula, and why if we understand the formula, we understand why the option Vega has a bell-shaped curve peaking when the option is at the money. My last two or three videos in this playlist looked at option delta and option gamma, which are respectively the first and second partial derivatives of the option value with respect to a change in the stock price. Now I look at vega, which is also a first partial derivative. So vega is a cousin or sibling, let's say, to delta in the sense they're both par first partial derivatives. So a sibling to delta and also to rho and theta, for example. And so mathematically, we can say Vega is a change in the call price with respect to a change in the volatility. So del it's like Delta in the sense that Delta was a change in the call price, but Delta was with respect to a change in the stock price. Here with Vega, it's the change in the call price with respect to a change in the volatility. In other words, how much does the call price change if the volatility of the option changes? And mathematically, Vegas uh, formula is actually pretty straightforward. It's the current stock price multiplied by the square root of maturity. So notice square root of time, that's a familiar pattern that shows up in option pricing models. And then it's multiplied by N of D1, which is the same N of D1 that we see in the black scholes merton N of D1 is the cumulative standard normal distribution function, except that here in Vega, we have an apostrophe to signify that we're taking the derivative of that CDF. The derivative of CDF is a PDF, or probability density function. So this is the uh, nor uh, probability density function for a normal, a standard normal distribution which is the familiar bell-shaped curve. And in fact, that gives shape to Vega. So you can see here's a plot of Vega for these assumptions. And it basically looks like the familiar bell curve because this N of D, N apostrophe D1 is in fact the PDF for the standard normal distribution function. So um, it's not exactly because it's, it's, it's distorted, is the way I think about it, distorted a bit by this multiplier. But it's handy to remember that its shape is basically the normal bell curve because then we don't have any problem remembering that Vega tends to peak for an at-the-money option. Maybe not exactly due to this distortion, but at the money or near at the money, Vega is going to be highest. And then deeply out of the money, deeply in the money, in this case of a call, it's going to tend toward zero. Now, I would also mention that in my previous video in this playlist, we looked at gamma. I can't remember if I shared the formula of gamma, actually. But the formula of gamma in the numerator has that same n apostrophe of d1, again, the PDF of the standard normal distribution. And its denominator is stock price scaled times square root of maturity, and the only difference is it adds a sigma in there. The, but my point is that option gamma, its shape is also largely, essentially, that standard normal um, bell curve, the PDF version. And so um, that's handy to just know because it helps us remember that gamma, like vega, they both are highest when the option is at the money or nearly at the money. Okay, so my purple plot here is for uh, actual Vega for the uh, option price uh, input assumptions that I've used before. And so you can see when this option is at the money, that is when the Vega is highest. And when the, op when that, the option has a value of 1375, this is just a straight plot of the option value against the stock price over here on the left in green. When we just take an at the money example, Option value is thirteen dollars and seventy-five cents. That's a it's a longer option here, one year. That's why. And then here's the associated Vega peaking at. I've teased out specifically at the peak here, the Vega of thirty-eight point three two, so that we can see how to interpret it. So now I'm taking this option at the money when the volatility is thirty percent right here, and the Black Scholes Merton price 
is $13.75, and my Vega is 38.32. How should we interpret it? Well, it's a first parcel derivative. So this is the approximated change in the call price. That is to say $38. I'm going to round. $38 would be the change in the call price for a one-unit change in volatility. Now, what's one unit, though? It's 100%. Right, but we wouldn't shock the volatility realistically from 30% to plus 100%. That would be to 130%. That's unrealistic. Also, as a linear approximation, it would be very inaccurate. But we might say, what happens if volatility shocks by plus 1%? Plus 1% is one hundredth of a unit. So we could take 1%, multiply it by the vega, which is in terms of mathematically of 100%, and we would get 0 0.3832. And in fact, this is just my test of it. All I did here is I plugged in a new volatility for this option, holding everything else equal, right? We say Ceritas Paribus, everything else the same. I reprice the option in the spreadsheet here, which you can download and see that. And so if I just increase the volatility by plus 1%, the new option value is $14.14, .14, and then take the difference, I get 38.32 cents. So in this case, it's remarkably accurate, right? This, this is based on my linear approximation. This is, a, this is an exact repricing. And so that's the one thing about Vega, I think, that uh, I've, I've occasionally gotten held up in is what are the units because and so for this reason it is um, it is conventional depending it just depends if we do this strictly mathematically I do get a Vega 38.32 but it is uh, in some conventions it would be typical to just divide this by 100 and say that the Vega is 0 0.3832 right knowing that we've divided this by 100 and then the interpretation is extremely straightforward. And But I would just say that, I would just remind you that this is actually in dollars now, right? Changing the call price. This is just saying, if this is the Vega, if we express it as divided by 100, which is to express it as per one percentage point, not percent, but per percentage point, then it's very intuitive. It simply means that we expect the call price to increase by 0.38, in other words, 38 cents, if we increase the volatility by 1%, right? So, and we can just do it just like that all day. If it's 2%, we multiply that by 2% and get the result. Very straightforward. But it is a an estimated dollar change in the call price. It's not a percentage of the call price. And then finally, in the spreadsheet here, I've just uh, shown you here another way that's in John Hall, another plot based on my actual numbers here of Vega. But you can see here the x-axis is timed expiration. And now that I've shown you the formula, right, I'm not going to get too fa fancy here, but now that I've shown you the formula, the uh, hopefully the shape here makes sense. Square root of time is giving this non giving this this nonlinear shape, but decidedly Vega is increasing with time to expiration. It's just increasing in a nonlinear way. So here I've got a Vega of point of 38.32, or if we want, depending on how we express it, if we want to express it per percentage point, it's okay to say this Vega is 0.38 or 38 cents. And that is for, you can see, a one-year term. So at the money, that's uh, right, that's um, somewhere, oh, right about here. So we know that if we increase the term, we're increasing uh, the vega. As we go put more intuitively, the longer the uh, term on the option, the greater the sensitivity of the call's price to a change in volatility. Hope that's intuitive. And then uh, finally, just on this, I've also got on the second page uh, for a put option, but you'll notice, don't need to spend too much time in there because it's the exact same formula, just like gamma. And this actually can be verified by put call parity for both, uh, for both Vega and 
gamma. It's the same formula and therefore the same shape for either a call or a put, given the same assumptions here, of course. So that's option vega. I hope that's helpful. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel and that way you get notified of the next video. Thanks. Bye.